Good morning friends, I am Sangeeta Dhavla, going to introduce to you a new topic. The main objectives of today's lesson is we will try to understand the various disorders that are related to alcoholism. Very important objective also would be to understand the different kinds of treatment procedures that are available for alcoholism. Each one of us is familiar that regular consumption of alcohol will deteriorate the bodily condition of a person to a certain extent. But when this crosses a certain limit and it reaches the level of addiction, there are a series of disorders that the person may fall prey to. We are going to take a look at the various alcohol related disorders. These are serious health problems which the alcoholic will not be able to tackle on his own. First and foremost alcohol related disorder is that of anemia. What is anemia? It is nothing but bloodlessness. You must be thinking how come alcohol and anemia are related? When the person drinks regularly, there is a drastic decrease of oxygen is carried in the red blood corpuscles in the body. This condition is called anemia and it will trigger off a whole lot of symptoms which will cause shortness of breath, fatigue and lightheadedness. When a person is not drunk, he feels a bit giddy, he gets fatigued very easily even without putting in much effort and he experiences a shortness of breath. Another very dangerous disorder that the alcoholic might succumb to if there is prolonged consumption of alcohol is the monster disorder which is called cancer. Habitual drinking will increase the risk for this disorder. Risk sets in when the alcohol that is consumed is converted into acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is a potent carcinogen. What is a carcinogen? Carcinogen is a cancer causing agent and therefore when this acetaldehyde levels are high in the body, the risk to get cancer also automatically becomes high. And where do you think cancer would generally occur for the alcoholic. Yes, the focal points become the mouth, the throat that is the pharynx, the voice box that is the larynx, esophagus, the breast, liver and the colorectal region. The risk becomes double when this alcoholic is a tobacco user too. He might chew tobacco or smoke tobacco, whatever he does, tobacco and alcohol put together increase the risk for cancer. Next comes the cardiovascular disease. Alcohol when consumed in heavy bouts will make the blood platelets clump together and when they clump together there are a number of blood clots formed. And it is commonsensical when there are number of blood clots, they lead to heart attack. Now heavy drinking leads to weakening of the muscles in the heart and these muscles will give way eventually and will lead to a lot of abnormalities in the heart rhythm. Another dangerous condition that the alcoholic may fall prey to is the cirrhosis of liver. Alcohol is considered as a serious poison to the liver cells and it is this basic reason why many of them fall prey to cirrhosis of liver. The liver becomes heavily scarred and it becomes a deadly situation and it cannot be treated successfully. But it is really difficult to predict who will fall prey to this kind of a disorder. Next very important and serious disorder is that of 
dementia. What is dementia? Dementia is the degeneration of brain cells. This condition comes with age in almost all of us. But for the alcoholic, it sets in at a very early stage. Heavy drinkers are more likely to get into this condition very early in their lives. What happens in dementia? The brain shrinks and the key regions get affected and as a result there is memory loss. Because the brain shrinks and there is lesser capacity in the brain to carry out its functions, the person cannot make judgments on his own, he cannot plan in advance, he cannot solve complicated problems and he cannot execute his work carefully. Another condition or rather a disorder is depression. Heavy depression or heavy drinking and depression are considered to go hand in hand. Now whether the person takes to drinking because of depression or he is depressed and so he is drinking is uncertain. Whatever depression and heavy drinking are so closely related to one another. Here is another alcohol related disorder which a few of us must have seen in our lifetime so far in the sense the alcoholic experiencing this disorder that is the seizures. Continued consumption of alcohol may bring about epilepsy in a few cases. This person would not have had a record or history of experiencing fits or seizures in his life so far. But it is because of the excessive consumption of alcohol that he has fallen prey to seizures. Now, yet another alcohol related disorder, gout. What is gout? It is a very, very painful condition because it results out of the formation of uric acid crystals in the joints of the heavy drinker. Majority of the gout cases are found to be hereditary, but to a certain extent it is the dietary factors also that are considered to contribute towards this disorder. And in addition to the dietary factors, we cannot at all overlook the contribution that alcoholism can make towards this disorder. So probably it is heredity that will lead to gout. It is the dietary factors that might contribute to the disorder, but they become more pronounced and they set in very early when it is coupled with alcohol consumption. So it is alcohol that aggravates the risk for gout. High blood pressure. Alcohol has different influence on blood pressure. It directly acts on the sympathetic nervous system. This sympathetic nervous system controls the contraction and dilation of the blood vessels in the body. Heavy drinking will bring about a rise in the blood pressure and continued consumption of alcohol will lead to a chronic condition. High BP will further lead to a series of health related problems again like the kidney disease, the heart disease and great risk for a stroke. Infectious diseases, yes these diseases are yet another group of disorders that the alcoholic may fall prey to. Continuous consumption of alcohol will reduce the efficiency of the immune system. He will catch infections very easily now. As a result, the ground is prepared fully well for infectious disorders like tuberculosis, pneumonia, HIV AIDS, sexually transmitted diseases and anything and everything that is infectious. 
Another alcohol related disorder is the nerve damage. There is a condition called alcoholic neuropathy. A form of nerve damage occurs. There are painful sensations like the person feels as if he is sitting on pins and needles. There is muscle weakness. There is constipation. There is erectile dysfunction. He cannot have a normal sexual life. Why does he experience all these conditions? Because there is a nerve damage in his body. He has arrived at this condition because of excessive consumption of alcohol and nerve cells have become absolutely toxic. As a result, he experiences a lot of nutritional deficiencies. So, heavy drinking can bring about a change in so many spheres of his life. Pancreatitis. Yes, this is another alcohol related disorder which the alcoholic might succumb to if there is continued consumption of alcohol. First and foremost, when he starts drinking, a simultaneous condition is triggered off in his body that is gas develops in his body and when this keeps on developing regularly it leads to a condition called gastritis. This condition will inflame the pancreas and this will cause pancreatitis. The chronic condition of pancreatitis will interfere with the digestive process and will further cause abdominal pain and persistent diarrhea. Now, we have just dealt with around 11 to 12 related alcohol related disorders, but research has reported that there are more than 60 disorders that are triggered off because of alcoholism. Though it may give temporary pressure, when you become an addict, it definitely hampers your life, the lifestyle of your family, it will affect your work beyond repair. Alcohol only does a lot of bad, not an iota of good at all. So, be cautious whenever you are invited to a party, whenever you are offered a peg. We have seen the various types of alcohol related disorders. Now, we understood that alcoholism is a very serious condition on its own. How do we help alcoholics come out of their predicament? How do we go about the treatment of alcoholism? What are the methods that exist which will prove to be effective and help the person tackle his problem carefully? Now, treatment of alcoholism is considered as a multidisciplinary approach and it is found to be highly effective as alcoholism is a highly complex disorder. It is not just one approach that will cure the person of the problem but it is a contribution from different types of treatment. For example, you might use some kind of a medication at the same time, the person also would need some kind of psychological support. The contribution here is in the form of medication and in the form of psychological support. So, depending on the intensity of the addiction that the person has fallen prey to and depending on the duration for which he was an alcoholic, one could decide upon the kind of treatment that is to be employed. The needs of the alcoholic will keep on changing with progress in the treatment. The treatment can be achieved in community clinics for those alcoholics who do not require hospitalization. As I just now said, it all depends on the extent to which the person has got himself into a beyond repair situation 
the person definitely has to be hospitalized. First and foremost, he needs to be detoxified completely and then his withdrawal symptoms be tackled. So, it is a series of treatment procedures that need to be used in order to bring him out of the situation. But ultimately, the main aim or objective of treating an alcoholic is recovery from his stage. There is yes going to be physical rehabilitation. You have to help him gain control over the cravings for the drink and see to it that he abstains from drinking for a considerable period of time. There is heavy amount of pressure on his thoughts. Given a moment, given a chance, he would go back and want to have a peg. All the efforts so far would go down the drain. So, it is not just the alcohol patient, it is not just the therapist, but it is his wife, his family, his friends, all of them who have to form a support system and help him come out of the situation. Capacitate him to lead a normal, regular life. Now, the treatment can take two different forms, the biological measures and the psychological measures. The biological measures include detoxification procedures. Here, the initial focus is on elimination of harmful alcoholic substances from the body of the individual. When the detoxification program is on, there are bound to be withdrawal symptoms and these can be tackled in the physical rehabilitation programs. The detoxification procedures are handled well in hospitals, clinical settings where medicines are readily available. When the person is given these medicines, it is seen that symptoms like nausea, vomiting, convulsions and delirium do not occur that frequently. The person is helped with his tension and anxiety that he experiences because of the withdrawal. Detoxification is coupled with psychosocial measures like family counseling, helping in employment for social readjustment of the alcoholic. The second procedure is the aversion therapy. This received considerable research attention and the Romans were the first who employed this technique by placing a live eel in a cup of wine. They forced the alcoholic to drink this unsavory cocktail and eventually he would be repelled by the wine. There are a number of deterrent measures that can be used after detoxification is achieved. For example, there is emetin hydrochloride which is an emetic. A bit of classical conditioning is achieved here. The person is given an emetic, he is given the alcohol and he immediately vomits the drink. Slowly he associates the drink with vomiting and he gives up the habit. Another instance is that of disulfiram, a drug which creates extremely uncontrollable effects when followed by alcohol. However, this is not the sole approach in order to get 100% cure for the alcoholic. There is another therapy called the electroshock therapy where the therapist has more control over the kind of aversive stimulus he gives. The therapist can reduce the side effects and also medical complications that might come out of the therapy. The third type of biological treatment in addition to detoxification and aversion therapy is the brain surgery. Just as we think that there is a certain part in the brain that is responsible for our hunger, researchers also felt that there is a certain part in the brain that controls the alcohol consumption. So, neutralizing this center will definitely cure the patient, but brain surgery is the last resort 
that the therapist will consider. Coming to the psychological measures, the first and foremost we will discuss is the group therapy. The main task is in getting the person agree to participate in the group therapy. But once he gets into the group therapy, he will see that he is not the lone person who is sailing through, but there are many others too in the same condition as he is in. It is more or less a give and take form of therapy. The person is made to realize that there are disastrous consequences in case he continues in the similar manner. The person is made to learn effective coping methods and positive steps towards dealing with his problem. The spouse and the children are also involved in these group meetings. Family treatment is the central focus in a few cases. Now, the second form of therapy is the sociotherapy. In this therapy, the main focus is on reducing the patient's aversive life situation. The job is lost, he is estranged from family, he is estranged from his friends. People around him do not support and they are not understanding. So he has to be equipped with effective coping techniques and the others also will have to be made aware that he is being a part of the treatment process and they are asked to cooperate and be less hostile towards him. Relapse may be possible, but if there is constant support, there is every chance that the alcoholic might come out of it successfully and give up his habit of alcoholism. The final one is the Alcoholics Anonymous. This offers a psychotherapeutic program where person to person and group relationships are emphasized. Who gets into this association? Teenagers and adults, whoever experiences drinking problems can be a part of this group. There is no dues, no fees and no records kept or no case histories maintained. As the name anonymous indicates, you will be addressed only with your first name and this body does not have any religious affiliations. Discussions about problems with alcohol, experiences of their recoveries are discussed in the group settings. Alcoholics Anonymous, it lifts the burden on the person. It lifts him of the responsibility because it perfectly understands that the alcoholism is now in a very helpless condition. The person sees people who are very much like him, shares similar kind of experiences and therefore he gains an insight into his problems, acquires greater ego strength and learns a lot of coping techniques. Ultimately, the long range objective of the therapist is not to prevent the use of alcohol but to help people learn to drink in moderation and under appropriate social conditions.